Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. This is Dan, as always, and I'm joined today by Lieutenant Stockton Cruz. He's a key member of our team, and we're going to talk to you guys about duty weapons. That's right. Choosing the right duty weapon is one of the most important decisions you can make when working in a law enforcement field or, in our case, a security field. It's not just about personal preference. It's about effectiveness, durability, longevity, reliability, all that good stuff. And we're going to get into the details of that today. So we're going to start by talking about brand, make, model, things like that, and then their impact on your selection in duty weapons. So let's talk about reliability and stuff. But before we get into that, industry standard. The industry standard for most law enforcement and most security is Glock. I, I don't think that's a far stretch to say. It just, just happens to be a very popular and reliable firearm. No, that's 100% correct. Uh, Glock is just renowned as the industry standard. You have a couple of the departments here and there that go either either or, but Glock is pretty much what everybody's rolling with. We do have a couple of different guns here that we're displaying. These are our favorite. These are our Glock 34 clones, the Shadow Systems. And, and to be to be clear, these are duty guns that myself and Lieutenant Cruz carry. They're basically Glock 17s with compensators on them from the factory. With the compensator, it's about the length of 34, so you have to buy a 34 holster, things like that. But right. There are reasons that we picked these firearms, and we'll get into those a little bit later. But just in general, yeah, that's another option. They're reliable. They're duty-grade firearms, and so we really enjoy them. It's not only about the firearm that you pick, though. You also have to have a really good holster. You have to make sure that your holster is just as reliable as your firearm. Right, and that's why we don't pick things like high points or certain extravagant SIGs and things like that where the aftermarket may not support your usage of duty firearms. So, for example, I know that there are duty holsters for high points, but there are other concerns to talk about there. But you're not going to get yourself a Safari Land Level 3 for a high point. You're not going to find... Don't buy a high point. You're not going to find all the newest guns in the market may not have holster support. They may not have duty equipment support for those firearms at the edge to kind of does. Right. So pretty much just blanket over quality. Glock is super reliable on quality. You're generally not going to run into a lot of issues besides general maintenance or their clones. With the Western MP, MP 2.0. Shadow, uh, Shadow systems. systems. Glock continues to be the industry standard, but that doesn't limit you to going out there, doing your own research, and finding what gun fits you the best. All new styles are also a good option. All right, so real fast, the weapons that we have on the table for uh, display, we've got two Shadow Systems DR920Ps. Again, these are just what Lieutenant Cruz and myself carry, so that there's two of them, sorry. Uh, we do have a simulated Desert Eagle. Don't carry Desert Eagle. I don't own a Desert Eagle. I used to. Don't own them anymore. Uh, not a good option for duty carry. We'll talk about that why later. Uh, and the last one on the table is actually kind of interesting. It's a Glock 43X. For a lot of you, you're probably wondering, well, that's a concealed carry gun. Why would you use that for a duty pistol? I actually am aware of three officers that work for us that carry 43Xs as their duty guns because their hand is smaller than, than is comfortable on full-size Glock. Uh, with shadow, uh, not shadow systems, uh, shield, with shield arms magazines, they have the same capacity as a Glock 19. And believe it or not, Safariland does make duty holsters for the 43X, not concealed, but open carry actual duty holsters. So if you have small hands and that's part of your selection process, maybe consider a 43X or a 48 or something along those lines. They're definitely doable. They make lights for them. They can get them RMR cut. Very capable firearm. And with that, you're still withholding all of the, the quality and duty grade that comes with your Glock 17 or your Glock 19. Just a smaller package. Just smaller package. All right, so as far as brand, make, and models are concerned, it's not really that important if you're carrying a Smith & Wesson, a Glock, a Shadow Systems, whatever, right? The considerations that you're going to want to take into account as a security guard, um, or if you're in a law enforcement agency that allows you to carry personal firearms or anything like that, before you make your purchase, just look at the aftermarket. See if there's holster support. See if there is duty weapon lights that you can put on that gun. Do they make holsters that also work with that gun and a weapon light? I've seen that before, too, where a holster has the functionality for a gun, but not with a weapon light. And just really, really do your research on what gun you want beforehand, uh, before making that purchase. And a lot of these purchases are once in a while kind of purchases because they're expensive. And I will say this. It seems like a daunting process when you're, you're just starting out, starting to find what kind of gun fits you 
and then jumping into, well, I need a holster, I need a weapon light. But it's it's really not that daunting of a process if you you know what you're looking for. So just doing all that research ahead of time will give you such a, a leap ahead that will help you along the way. Absolutely. So whether it's a SIG, sorry if you carry a SIG, uh, or a Glock or Smith & Wesson, doesn't matter. Just make sure that whatever it is that you're buying, you have the ability to actually support that weapon system on a on a duty level. All right, next up, we're going to talk about the calibers, all the different calibers that are used in duty grade and pros and cons, maybe what works best for you. Personally, I'm a straight-laced 9 mil guy, easy to come by, easy to load up, doesn't give me many, many issues. 45 ACP, two world wars, my stopping power. <laughs> Back-to-back world war champion. <laughs> All joking aside, guys, um, the caliber debate has been a debate that's ongoing. It's been going for years and years and years. Um, the grand scheme of things, 9mm tends to be the one that a lot of people gravitate to for recoil management, for ammo capacity, for stopping power, all of that um, in the consideration with caliber selection. That being said, I also know guys that carry 40. I know people who have carried 45 on duty. When you're making that decision, though, just keep in mind what your fellow guards are carrying or your other law enforcement officers around you are carrying. If everyone is carrying nine millimeter and you decide you want to carry a five, seven, that's fine. Just keep in mind that nobody's going to be able to toss you a magazine that fits in your gun or that will you know, feed ammo or right. If it, even if it did feed ammo, like you're just going to, it's not going to work. Right. It's, so that is all just about team compatibility. You know, we only carry so much ammo. And so if we need someone to toss us a mag, it's a lot easier when you're shooting the same caliber. Uh, so if you need that though, having a really bad day and I, I feel for you. So yeah, I don't know where we were going with that after that. So, so all of that aside, none of that is important if you're not training on the caliber that you have. So if you're training with nine mil, but you're shooting in 45, like you're going to have a hard time when you need to perform because you're used to shooting nine. And now you have all that recoil that you're going to have to deal with. Revive. Yeah. So, or not, not that more recoil. It's just a different recoil. Right. 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 But you know, point is, is train on whatever caliber you're going to be shooting when you're in the field. Yeah. Guys, it's important to remember that whatever training is your lowest level of training is what you will fall back on to in stressful environments. So you have that huge cortisol dump, that adrenaline dump, you're, you're stressing out about whatever it is. You're not, going to perform to the best training that you've ever done. You're going to perform to the most uh, memory training that you have. So if you've only ever trained on 40 cal and you recently switched to nine millimeter, you shoot 400 rounds of nine millimeter, but you've shot 5,000 rounds of 40 cal subconsciously and muscle memory wise, you're going to go back to controlling that firearm as if it's a 40 cal. Right. So whatever, whatever weapon system you pick, just make sure you train on it and that it's a caliber that you can afford to shoot hundreds and hundreds of rounds on and dry fire. Yeah. Dry fire is great. Dry fire is great for recoil control. It's great for muscle memory development, practice reloads. Uh, you don't need any ammunition to so practice reloads. Two empty guns, two empty bags, and an empty gun. Don't go to the range. Sit there, dry fire, reload. One other thing about ammunition and caliber is over penetration, right? Collateral damage, un- unintended consequences of pulling that trigger. Uh, if you're shooting 84 millimeter. Uh, you have <laughs> <laughs> a lot of uh, over penetration. A lot of overpen. Uh, same with like uh, five seven. Five seven is a fairly common handgun round. Um, I don't want to say fairly common in the duty world, but it's a common round in general, right? Um, it's it's basically a, a miniaturized five five six. You know, over penetration. Um, your over penetration potential is a lot higher than with a hollow point nine millimeter or a hollow point forty cal. Um, again, hollow points, right? Uh, yeah. You shouldn't be carrying full metal jacket on duty. If you live in a state that mandates you carrying full metal jacket, it is what it is. I'm sorry that you live there. You have the option to move free country. <laughs> but uh, hollow points are not just for dumping that energy, that kinetic energy into your target and stopping the threat sooner. It also has to do with those rounds stopping in the person or a thing that you are intending to shoot and not the person standing behind them or the car behind them, or exactly. whatever else. There's a exactly. lawyer attached to each one of those rounds. You want to make sure it actually stops in the target you're trying to engage. 100%. No HEDP.
So we have a couple of other aspects to cover, and we kind of touched on this a little bit ago with like holsters and, and weapon lights and things like that. Um, but why don't you take us away on some final thoughts on the aftermarket? So yeah, one of those other aspects that we want to talk about is maintenance. How easy it is to maintain your firearm, especially if you're putting you know thousands of rounds through it during your training, um, maintaining the weapon, getting it cleaned. Um, how easy it is to field strip it because you never know if you have an issue and you just need to, to break it down and figure out what's going on. Well, it's really unfortunate to have a range day, have something fail on your firearm, and then it just you, you have yeah, to come your, home your, your whole range day is soiled because yeah, because it's, it's, you need special you, yeah, you need to get into that gun and you can't. Yeah, like uh, I had a shadow system, not shadow systems. It was a Springfield Prodigy. I needed an Allen key to be able to take down the recoil spring. Uh, I didn't have an Allen key with me at the range, then that meant that I wasn't maintaining that firearm at the range. But other things to consider too are like wear parts. You know, not not just like, hey, can I clean my gun? But parts that wear down over time and you need to replace those. You know, right. Especially, and I realize that the general population that does security or law enforcement is not maintaining their firearm or shooting to the, the, the volume that I recommend shooting to. But if you are shooting, you know, thousands and thousands of rounds on a yearly basis, eventually parts are going to need to be replaced, you know, barrels um, or extractors, uh, anything that wears down. Uh, for example, these Chow Systems DR920Ps actually have a little washer on the end of the muzzle where the compensator goes on to, and that washer wears out every 5,000 rounds or so, and you have to replace it. That is something I do need tooling for. I'm not going to be able to do that at the range, but being able to buy those washers and know that, hey, you know, this company is going to be around five years from now when I need to eventually replace a part, or hey, these parts are available and not perpetually out of stock on the website, right? Yeah, I think that's a good point is knowing your weapon and knowing which parts are going to wear. Like you were talking about the washer, you know, just being aware of those parts that they have the numbers for. They know when it's going to wear down and just being prepared to apply that maintenance to your weapon. And moving on from that customization, you know, you don't want a gun that is so unique that there's nothing out there for it that are iron sights or optics or weapons lights. You want it to be pretty universal when it comes to what you put on your weapon so that it's duty grade. Right. And, and again, this goes back to holsters too. Even, even being able to find a duty holster for a firearm does not necessarily guarantee that you have the entire holster support market behind you, right? If you have a Safari Island holster, you can do things like get an Odin tourniquet holder and a QLS system to be able to take it off and the, the, leg straps and t-rex arms fit perfectly with the grommets and everything but if you're using a amazon brand holster you may not have that availability for aftermarket for your holster let alone your firearm um so the uh kind of final thoughts on on like the totality of circumstance with duty firearms is durability reliability and aftermarket support those are like my top three things man i, I don't know about you yeah i'd say that. and then of course at the end at the end of the day just train on whatever weapon you're using. Get comfortable with that weapon and uh, should be should be all right. Yeah, so that pretty much wraps up our initial thoughts on duty weapons. We filmed this video with the intention of you guys leaving comments below to ask us questions so that we can continue answering questions and being supportive to you, the viewer, whether you are a self-defender, a security guard, a law enforcement officer, an active duty military guy who just owns guns on his pastime. I used to be there and anything like that. If you guys have questions, leave them below in the comments. If you liked this video, give us a like and please subscribe. If you don't like the video, that's fine. Dislike it, but leave me a comment below. Tell me what we're doing wrong and what we can do to improve. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time.